discuss the different types of friction clutches. We know that clutch can be defined as a mechanical device which, when engaged, transmits power from one shaft to the other coaxial shaft. Also, we know that the clutch is responsible for various functions such as Now, let us discuss the different types of clutches in brief. Automobile clutches can be mainly classified into two types friction clutches and fluid flywheel. Friction clutches work on the principle that when a rotating disc comes in contact with a stationary disc, the stationary disc starts rotating because of the friction between them. Fluid flywheel works on the principle of transfer of motion between two members by means of a fluid. Friction clutches can be further classified into five types. Cone clutch, single plate clutch, multi plate clutch, semi centrifugal clutch and centrifugal clutch. Now let's discuss each one by one. Cone clutch. A typical cone clutch assembly can be shown as it consists of an inner cone shaped flywheel and a cone shaped clutch plate mounted on the driving and driven shafts respectively. The conical surface of the clutch plate is lined with the friction lining. The driven or the gearbox shaft is splined which helps the clutch plate slide forwards and backwards. When the clutch is engaged, the clutch plate cone moves fully inside the flywheel cone so that the conical friction surfaces are in complete contact. Thus, the torque gets transmitted to the gearbox shaft through the clutch plate. For disengaging the clutch, the clutch paddle is pressed which pulls the clutch plate out of the flywheel against the force of a spring, thereby separating the contact surfaces. Single plate clutch. A typical single plate clutch assembly can be shown as here the flywheel is rigidly fixed to the engine shaft and the clutch plate is pressed between the flywheel and the pressure plate. The clutch plate has friction linings on both the sides to provide two annular friction surfaces for power transmission. This clutch plate is mounted on a splined hub and is thus free to slide over the gearbox shaft. Coil springs are provided circumferentially on this pressure plate. These springs provide axial force to keep the clutch in engaged position. For disengaging the clutch, the clutch paddle is pressed, which pulls the pressure plate outside against the force of the spring, thereby releasing the clutch plate and separating the contact surfaces. Nowadays, a modified single plate clutch known as diaphragm spring type single plate clutch is used. A typical diaphragm spring type single plate clutch can be shown as it consists of a diaphragm spring attached to the pressure plate instead of regular coil springs. In the free condition, the diaphragm spring is conical in shape. But when assembled, it is constrained to an approximately flat condition. Because of which, it exerts a force circumferentially on the pressure plate. This force on the pressure plate keeps the clutch in engaged position. The diaphragm spring is hinged to the clutch cover to provide a fulcrum while disengaging. For disengaging the clutch, the clutch paddle is pressed which pushes the throwout bearing. This pushes the diaphragm spring at the center and in turn pulls the pressure plate off, thereby releasing the clutch plate. Multiplate clutch. A typical multiplate clutch assembly can be shown as it consists of multiple friction plates attached to the flywheel housing, which engages with the multiple clutch plates mounted on the splined hub to provide better and greater torque transmission. Its working is similar to the single plate clutch. In ordinary condition, these clutch plates remain engaged with the friction plates due to the force applied by the pressure plate. For disengaging the clutch, the clutch pedal is pressed, which pulls the splined hub outside against the force of the spring. Semi centrifugal clutch. These clutches are used where high torque transmission is required. A typical semi centrifugal clutch assembly can be shown as. Here the clutch is engaged with the help of spring force as well as centrifugal force. It consists of three hinged and weighted levers and three clutch springs alternately arranged at equal spaces on the circumference. These levers are hinged to the pressure plate through a needle bearing and also hinged to the clutch cover at point B. The upper side of the lever is weighted. Now at normal speeds when the power transmission is low, the springs keep the clutch engaged. But at higher speeds, when the power transmission is high, the weights on the lever tend to move outwards due to the centrifugal action. This introduces a torque about the hinge B, which causes the lever to put pressure on the pressure plate. 
thus keeping the clutch firmly engaged and providing better transmission. Centrifugal clutch. A typical centrifugal clutch assembly can be shown as here springs are eliminated altogether and only the centrifugal force is used to apply the required pressure for keeping the clutch in engaged position. Also, no clutch paddle is used as the clutch automatically disengages below a certain speed. Here, as the speed increases, the weight A flies, thereby operating the lever B, which presses the pressure plate C. This force gets transmitted to the clutch plate D with the help of springs E. The clutch plate containing the friction linings gets pressed against the flywheel, thereby transmitting the torque. Spring G is used to keep the clutch disengaged at low speed. Now let us summarize the different types of friction clutches as